Please stand. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Into your hands, Almighty God, we commend this act of worship. We're very thankful for spending our lives. We're very thankful for the opportunity to worship freely in this land of the living. As we come collectively, dear God, we pray that what we have done here and confess this morning be done to the honor and glory of your name. Remember our brothers and sisters who are viewing this act of worship online. Be with us, Almighty God, and with them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our intro to him, 320 in the mission phrase. Three, two, zero.
Blessed good morning to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Today we thank God yet again for this golden opportunity, not only to worship collectively and freely, but to celebrate another year as we celebrate our fathers, thanking God for them, for their life and their witness. Our worship continues on page 100 with the following sentences. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Top of page 101 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Bless the Lord and Father, that was assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your world and your church. Grant that we, confessing our sins, may worthy offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthy magnify your holy name to Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, is the Holy Spirit. The first is the collect for proper seven at the bottom of page 174. And then you have a collect for Father's Day, the second to last page of your bulletin. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, our defender, storms rage about about us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair, deliver your sons and daughters from fear, and preserve us all from unbelief. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We pray together. Heavenly Father, you entrusted your Son, Jesus, the child of Mary, to the care of Joseph, an earthly father. Bless all fathers as they care for their families. Give them strength and wisdom, tenderness and patience. Support them in the work that they do. Protect them as they look to you for love and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please sit for the liturgy of the word. Illumination for the first lesson. This 
thought is the basis of David's courage. The Lord who saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of this Philistine. David said to Saul, let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with the Philistine. Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are just a boy, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father, and whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth, and if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw, strike it down, and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, the Lord who saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of this Philistine. So Saul said to David, go and may the Lord be with you. Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. David strapped Saul's sword over the armor and he tied it in vain, he tried in vain to walk, for he was not used to them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I am not used to them. So David removed them. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in his shepherd's bag, in the pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came on and drew near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistines said to David, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistines said to David, come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, you come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you down and cut off your head, and I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. 
When the Philistine drew nearer to meet David, David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 9, verses 9 through 20. I will give thanks, sorry. The Lord will be, the Lord will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in time of trouble. Sing praise to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Proclaim to the peoples the things he has done. Have pity on me, O Lord. See the misery I suffer from those who hate me. O you who lift me up from the gate of death. The ungodly have fallen into the pit they dug. And in the snare they set is their own foot caught. The wicked shall be given over to the grave, and also all the peoples that forget God. Rise up, O Lord, let not the ungodly have the upper hand. Let them be judged before you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Please sit for the reading of the epistle. Elimination for the second lesson. Paul remembers the hardship he has endured for the sake of the gospel and urges disciples to open their hearts to a relationship with God. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now this is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way. Through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, my purity, knowledge, patience, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, and ill repute 
and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in, in yours, in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual hymn, 545, 545. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark, the fourth chapter, 
beginning at the 35th verse. On that day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the call behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the gospel of Christ. Mission Praise 142. Let us pray. Father, may these spoken words be faithful to the written word, and lead us to the living word, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Then Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. 
and there he squandered his property in, dis in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare, but here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, quickly bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. I put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his eldest son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come, and your father has killed a fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, listen, for all these years I've been working like a slave for you, and I've never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I may celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the father calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. Words coming from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 15, verses 11 to 32. The narrative just read, my friends, is one that's beloved by many. It is a parable of the prodigal son. Many have, many have identified with this son, and they believe that he deserved the mercy that was shown to him. In spite of his disregard for the authority of his father, as being the head of the household. The young son is given the freedom he demands from his father, even at the risk that the freedom might be misused. But the choices he makes, my friends, lead to personal disaster. Finally, the son comes to his senses. He returns to his father ready to confess his sin and hoping to be accepted as a hired man. But he's not a hired man. He is a son. And the father welcomes him back with open arms, very joyful to know that the son once lost has been found. And so he has a celebration to celebrate his return. But as you heard, there's also an older son in the narrative. He's angry that the father is so forgiven to 
his son, and his brother. Like the Pharisees that usually try to trap Jesus, the older son neither sees his own attitude as sin, nor will he take any joy in the rescue of his brother from sin's bondage, my friends. My brothers and sisters in Christ, centering on the prodigal son, we miss the fundament, the fundamental lesson of the parable. What is that principle? We hear the parable of the lost son or the prodigal son. But it should be labeled what? What should be entitled? Just give a guess. The prodigal son. But on the line is that what, what other character seems more prominent and more important than the son? The father. This father is like no father you have ever known. And today, being, father, being Father's Day, it is appropriate to re-examine this recognizable story, my friends, from a different angle. So looking at the angle of the father, his love, his generosity, his compassion, he shows to both sons. In the narrative, it appears both sons did not have a loving relationship with their father. The younger son got tired of home and of obeying his father. He demanded and got his share of the property and his freedom. Does that happen in Anguilla? Now, no son of yours and no daughter of yours can come and say, listen, I know such and such your value. I demand that you give me my share. My share? You work for it? No. But again, the father we're talking about is a loving father, compassionate father. Yes, you may be willing to assist that child in whatever desire or dream he or she has, maybe for education or what our business, you're willing to assist. But to come and demand while I'm still living, that is ungratefulness. You need to be cut out of the will. But the father again, he tells the story of this father who loves his children so much that he's willing to bend backwards to accommodate them. The older son saw his father as a taskmaster, taskmaster that made him serve in the fields. While they were in the house, neither was at home in their father's love. You can tell. You're just concerned about the things of this world. Not what effect will come upon the father when he leaves home. Or saying to your father at the end of the story, that all these years I've been toiling for you. You're not been toiling for me, you've been toiling for yourself. You're working for yourself. You make a living. So it's not for me. You work, you get a wage, and so you're not toiling for me. Our parents today experience such dilemmas with their children. If you do, adopt the approach of the father. Pray and wait for their return from irresponsibility. Pray that they get the common sense. Remember that first of all, they're in this land because God willed it. They're in this land because their parents willed it too. They brought them into this world. Also have respect and honor. I remember that the world owes you nothing whatsoever. Parents who have watched their sons and daughters made bad choices know that waiting for more, that waiting is far more difficult than pressing and suffering, trying to plead with them. You know that you're anxious about them coming home because you know the danger that are out there in the world. Especially our young girls, that, our young daughters, where they can be taken advantage of by the so-called sweet-mouthed men that are out there. And I'm not even saying boys, I say men. And so you have to constantly bring them before God. You have to constantly talk to them morning, noon, and night. 
because the devil will want to trap them and tell them that God doesn't care about them. So here is his father anxiously waiting for his child to return home to him. We do likewise to those of us who they have grown up and decide to leave home. Now sometimes, you know, when they leave home, they're on these guys that everything's going to be well. But when they get out there, they never see what parents have gone through, you know, paying the bills, purchasing the food, for the groceries, and everything else. But when they get out there, they have to put their hand in their own pocket. Some get wise quickly and return home sooner rather than later. Because it's costly. And we see the world is going today. More children, are, adult children are spending more time home because the world is tough. Mortgages are costly and expensive. Down payments. So if you don't have a fairy godfather or mother, it's going to be a challenge for you to purchase a home. So if you're smart, an adult child, this is my dream. My parents may be have another 10, 15 years, 20 years of employment. I'll be respectful, because at the end of the day, I'm hoping to have my own place where I can call my home. So until then, yes, I'm an adult, but I have to respect the wishes of my parents, show respect and honor. It is only wise, because what you sow is what you reap, you know. What you sow is what you reap, my friends. Years later, the son returns. Having become aware of his slavery to the world, he convinces himself that God has a better destiny in mind for him. And he begins on the road back to his soul. So the prayers of the father are working because God listens. He too is concerned about this child, about this boy. Upon returning, he discovers that the father is very different from the idea that he had formed of him. The father is waiting for him and wants to meet him, showing him that nothing his son had done in the intervening years had compromised that love. We very often talk about the love of a mother for a child. But please, fathers do have a love for their children. And they are willing to go all the way. They are willing to go all the way. The father restores his dignity, erasing the memory of the lost inheritance. There is a celebration of the feast in his honor. However, the older son or the older brother who had stayed at home was disgusted and angry with his father for treating his brother with such kindness. He refused to take any part in the joyful celebrations. His father pleaded with him, but in vain. Again, the oldest brother is living on the comforts of the father. How can he be so dis disrespectful? On the day of his father's greatest joy, he sought to destroy it with his own anger. So you're not concerned that your father, for the past years, struggled, was down so many times because of his son. And on this day of celebration, we have reason to celebrate. You are not happy. You're bringing anger and deceit into this family. That's why it says that a family that prays together will stay together. We have to be concerned about others. What I do will I stay in my name too? Because we are one. And so when our brother finds himself, or our sister finds herself in a position, we must be concerned. We must work in harmony to assist that person. We don't know what they're going through. 
But the, 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 the saying we are in it together is so important. We all share the joys and the, the, the fears and the burdens of this world. The Father was trying to instill this teaching in, within his children. Though the Father deeply loved both of his children, none of them embraced that love. Sadly, countless parents, and more so fathers, are craving for such love from their children, especially adult children. They want to be free. They want to live as they please and without any responsibility or accountability to their parents, even when they're living in their parents' house. They want to go in and out at any time. They want to say as a like to your parents. But growing up, well, I wouldn't say growing up, as a, as a young adult, I think I'm still young, 50s that young. But in my 20s, sometimes you know you no longer have to depend upon your parents, my mom more in particular. Okay, and sometimes you may ask the question, really? I mean, you may raise your voice. Thank God I'm the only one who have done that in here. See the eyes looking at me. And I still get a cough. Are you gonna hit back your mother? No. I still get a stone or a spoon. What is close to her hand she pick it up? So we have to be careful that when we become parents, and we have our children, well, God forbid, but sometimes it do happen, that may raise a voice too at you. Okay, don't forget where you are. This is not your house. So let that one pass. And you let the other another pass because you don't want to put them outside in the world. And that's a struggle that parents do have with their children. That's what we go through too with our parents. There's always a balance. But behind of that is consistent prayer. Praying and praying and praying and praying. So that they will respond to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. That's all we can do. That's what the father did. For several years, this son of his, as, 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 <laughs> as his older perhaps I said, this son of yours, he left the home, lived his life, but his father was praying for him, come home, come home, come home. My friends, all of us have many a time been prodigal prodigal, ungrateful, selfish children of our loving Father. But he is still a father of infinite love, of boundless mercy. He's not only waiting for us to return, like the human father in the story. He's continuing sending messages to recall us and to help us on the return journey. And so when we find ourselves in a particular place and something happens extraordinary, that is God speaking to you. This is a warning. Be warned. And he may send an, an, an elder to you. Young man, young lady. What are you doing? Our Father in heaven constantly send insights to us to keep us upon the straight and narrow path, my friends. He's continually sending out messages to call us and to help us. My friends, like the prodigal in the story, we may have misused the gifts that our Heavenly Father gave us. We may have abused our freedom and broken his laws. We may have descended to the deepest depths of shame, just as the sun was actually competing with the pigs for their own um, food. And you know, Jews do not participate in having the wonderful pork that the Gentiles do enjoy, right? That was shame. To hear a Jew touching a pig or being associated with We too have been down there, my friends. 
You'll be caught in so many situations. Can God really forgive me? Yes, he can. If I do it again, yes, he will. And again and again for five, six years, yes, he will. But do not take his grace for granted. Why? Because no one knows the hour or the day when we shall depart this world. So he has nothing to do with him taking you out of this world or me out of this world. But the laws have been placed in this universe. We live and we die. So do not take God's love for granted, my friends. We may now feel torn and battered, but never forget our loving, merciful Father is made for us with open arms for us to return to him. Our Father has been calling some for 70 years, 80 years, 20 years, 10 years, 30 years, and we're still refusing to come home. We are comfortable with the badge. I have been confirmed. I'm an Anglican. But are you living faithfully to his call? Have you committed your life to Christ? As he comes, you call us, come home, come home, come home. Again, it's for your own benefit, it's for my benefit. He's saying eternal life is real, it's possible. Where will you spend eternity today, my friends? As God calls us, we must respond. We enjoy the world for a while. It is time to leave it and come home to the Father. Leave all those shiny objects in the past. Focus upon God. Focus upon the family of the church and your family. And live that committed life that God expects of us. My friends, until we have drawn our last breath on earth, the mercy of God and his pardon are there for us for asking. We don't have to beg. And he's not going to force us. The gift of eternal life is offered to all. The prodigal son realized that he was making a mistake. He was called by the evil and the enemy that is out there. Come, boy, it's good. Some of us are being called into temptation. I'm saying to you, listen to the guidance of the Holy Father. I've spoken to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Son, let us turn to page 106. Let us recite the Apostles' Creed, page 106, the Book of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Let us pray. Your response is, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, when the waves of light threaten to overwhelm us, forgive us if we blame you or others for our troubles. Teach us to find you in the storms of life and give us the faith to always believe that you will bring calm and peace. Everlasting God, we pray for your church here. 
We ask for your blessing on our work as we seek to create a church community that welcomes visitors and strangers, provides a refuge for those who feel threatened or alone, a refuge from life's troubled waters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, as we see the brokenness of our world, we pray for healing among the nations, for fear share the coronavirus vaccines, for food where there's hunger, for freedom where there's oppression, for joy where there's pain, that your love may bring peace to all your children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we thank you for the joy of human love and for all those among whom we live and work. We especially pray for those among our friends and families who do not know you or whose faith has been shaken. Help them to see that we have an anchor that keeps the soul, steadfast and sure while the billows roll, fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, when our lives feel chaotic and desolate because of illness or sorrow, help us to hear your holy word. For by that word, Jesus calmed the storm, and by it he healed and made people whole. We pray for those who have requested our prayers. Help them to triumph over their Goliaths and help them put their trust in you and in the knowledge and skills of the doctors and nurses who are treating them. Lord, in your mercy, loving God, we pray for those saddened by the death of someone close and dear to them, for members of our families who have died, and whose anniversary of death we recall. Help us to experience the comfort of the Holy Spirit within us and the fellowship of the church family around us until we are reunited once more in your heavenly kingdom. Amen. The Act of Penitence on page 123. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and one another in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve in the newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm us, strength in our goodness, and keep your life eternal through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. By the one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. We have all made the drink of the one spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace.
Our dear visitors, watch with us for the first time or a long time. Please stand so we can recognize you and give your royal St. Mary's welcome. No. Okay. Today we wish our fathers a very happy Father's Day. We want to continue to thank God for you. We want to thank God for being the source of inspiration to your family and especially your children. And we ask that you remain ever faithful to our Father in heaven because he is ever faithful to us. And so let us commend our fathers on this day. Happy Father's Day. This afternoon at 4.30, there will be Bible study. And we are also, I wouldn't say encourage, expecting junior and adult confirmation candidates to attend Bible study every Sunday, that Bible study, at Bible study, starting today. So again, if you know anyone who is a confirmation candidate, he or she, or and she, you do such a thing, is expected to attend Bible study on Sundays at 4.30, starting today. Also, on Monday, 6.15 a.m., Martins and Mass, the 21st, Wow, 21st already. Monday 21st, 6.15 a.m., Martins and Mass. On Tuesday, we celebrate St. Alban, Bishop and First Martyr of Britain. And we are encouraged to pray for the bishops, clergy, and congregations of our companion diocese of St. Alban, England. On Thursday, the 24th, it's another feast day, we celebrate the Nativity of John the Baptist. We are encouraged also to pray for the Diocese of the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands as they celebrate their patronal festival. On Friday, 6.15 a.m., Martins and Mass, 3 p.m., funeral service for Calvin Edinburgh, Saturday, the 26th, 3 p.m., Funeral Eucharist for Alban John at the Poor Cathedral. Next Sunday is the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. 6.15, Mass with Hymns, 8 a.m., Mass with Hymns, and 4.30 p.m., Bible Study. Next Sunday, we will be collecting an offering for our brothers and sisters in St. Vincent. We know that some have returned to that particular area, to their homes, and they're still requesting God's help through us. And so remember, please, to bring an offering next week to assist our brothers and sisters. When your neighbor house on fire, make sure to what the pan for you because you never know. I've been through that before. Okay? So please, let us give generously. And again, you may say it or have it, we'll ask the Lord to provide it for you. He will inspire you, and he will provide it for you. Today, I also want to thank uh, Aqua, as they will be making a presentation to our fathers here this morning. At the first service, we had to take the names of those who did not uh, get a gift. But as I said, if it's once, day, even days that you know fathers and mothers will turn out, is on those two days. So if you can, always try to have extra. But a good explanation was given to me why, so it's okay. We also want to thank our mothers' unions as they continue few in number 
We are two or three are gathered. They are there, and we thank them for the ministry. Let's continue to encourage them. They have a purpose that God gave them to fulfill. So we continue to give God thanks for your ministry and your family. And remember that you're working for Almighty God, not for Father Christian or the Bishop, for God. And it matters. It matters. So this time I call upon Aqua, the organization of Aqua, or the Ministry of Aqua to come and make that presentation, please. So fathers, get alert, no set go, but just get ready to come up and receive your appreciation. Happy Father's Day also to, to those who are viewing this service online. May God come to bless you and your family and your children in particular as you seek to make a difference in this part of God's vineyard. Come, my Yeah, it is. I, did, I forget to please turn over. Special notice. <clears throat> and listen well, please. We appeal to all persons whose loved ones are in turn in the, involved in the St. Mary's burial ground to ensure that the vaults are properly covered. Failure to do so will result in vaults that are uncovered or just covered with plywood will be filled with dirt. Vaults that are not covered serve as catchments for water when it rains and breeding, and breeding places for mosquitoes. Let us protect our community from mosquito-borne diseases. Second notice, persons wishing to carry out work in the burial ground should first consult with the office. Don't go into the church's burial ground and do what you want to do. Come consult with the office. Thank you. Go ahead. Who is a dad? A dad is someone who wants to catch you before you fall, but instead picks you up, brushes you off, and lets you try again. A dad is someone who wants to keep you from making mistakes, but instead lets you find your own way even though his heart breaks in silence when you get hurt. A dad is someone who holds you when you cry, scolds you when you break the rules, shines with pride when you succeed, and has faith in you even when you fail. On behalf of the members of ACWA, I'd like to take this opportunity to wish all fathers a blessed, a happy and a fruitful Father's Day. I trust that you will enjoy your day. And on behalf of ECWA again, we would like to present a small token of appreciation to the fathers here today. So could the fathers please come forward and I'll stand there and you'll take a little bag out of the big bag. Fathers, Please come.
Yeah, okay. Six persons. No, I didn't want one. No, no, no. Five or six persons. One, two, three, four, five. That's enough. Thank you all very much. Anyone celebrate an anniversary of their birth? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, into your very loving arms, we commend these, your beautiful daughters. We thank you for allowing them to celebrate an anniversary of another birth. We thank you for smiling upon them. We thank you for breathing upon them daily, for transforming their lives, dear God, into holy people. We thank you, dear God, for the day that they celebrate with joy, peace, and love. Continue, dear God, to let them know that you are ever faithful to them. You expect them to be faithful to you. We thank you for their loved ones. We thank you for the friends and the joy they share in this world. I'm very sure they are thankful, dear God, as they reflect upon the past. You see, you have been always there with them, nurturing them, bringing them along as they struggle in certain situations. And so we pray, Almighty God, that they will look to you, the order of their lives. Continue to provide all that is necessary for their well-being and continue to breed a healthy life into them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. celebrating the anniversary of their marriage? No? Okay. The Octary Hymn 412, 412.
for the presentation of the offering, we'll use form A. And as we bring our gifts, this bread and this wine, we also bring our fathers before Almighty God. And also the Mother's Union, praying of God, we we'll continue to touch them in very special ways so they could continue to serve him in all his glory and his honor. So please join me praying. Through your goodness, Lord, we have this bread and wine to offer. The food of the earth and the work of human hands, they will become our spiritual food. Things come from you, O oh Lord, and of your own do we give you. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. Because on this most glorious day, a triple light was given. On the first day of creation, you brought light and life into being. On the first day for our salvation, you raised your son victorious over death. On this day, you gave your holy and life-giving spirit to your church. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who ever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Eucharistic prayer D on page 140. All glorious praise and thanksgiving be unto you, O Lord, Holy Father Almighty, everlasting God. You created the world and all mankind and of your tender mercy, gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there by his own oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation of satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And he instituted, and in his holy gospel, commanded us to continue perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father. We most humbly beseech you, and we please to accept, bless, and sanctify these gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that it may be for us the body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he gave it thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he gave him thanks, he gave to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for remembrance of me. In faith we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Now therefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, your servants, with all your holy people, have you remember the blessed passion, mighty resurrection, and glorious ascension of your beloved Son. Do offer unto your divine majesty this bread of eternal life and this cup of everlasting salvation. Render thanks to you for the wonderful redemption which you have made possible for us in him. And we beseech you, O Father, to accept upon your heavenly altar the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and to grant that by the merits and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all your whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, all who shall be partakers of this Holy Communion may be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction and be numbered in the glorious company of your saints. Please join me in praying. 
and here we offer and present unto you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice. And although we are unworthy to offer unto you any sacrifice, yet we beseech you to accept this, our bounded duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the union of the Holy Spirit, we worship you in the union of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory be unto you, O Father Almighty, throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. As our Savior taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, give us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy that thou should call on my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. The hymn during communion, 620, 620.
Young people, please stand for your blessing. 35 and under. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, this is the day you have made and your young people will rejoice and be glad in it. We are thankful yet for another opportunity to bless our children, those who are here on the compound and those throughout the social media. We thank you, Almighty God, yet again for allowing these children of yours to see a new beginning of a new week. And so we pray that your favor will be with them throughout this week and for the rest of their lives. We pray that they remain ever faithful to you and to their parents, that they trust you in all things, that they depend upon you, their God, for all the necessities of this life. Remember those who are engaged at this time or preparing for end of term or end of year examinations, for those who are looking forward to beginning a new chapter in their education. We pray that they will remain steadfast in their studies. For those who are contemplating employment, we pray, dear God, that the word ahead will be favorable for them. Calling to bless their parents and their siblings, their neighbors, their friends. But above all, dear God, we pray that they thank you for your son, Jesus Christ who walked into their lives before they came into this world. May they remain faithful to the call and to the mission of the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. Remain standing as we sing with you the hymn. Which one is it? One thousand and twelve. Him one zero one two in the mission phrase. And you can dance if you want to for Jesus. <laughs>
Lord be with you. Please sit. The second post remain of prayer on page 148. Let us pray. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so, God, with confidence, we approach your throne at this time, seeking mercy and healing on the life of your beloved daughter. We pray, dear God, that this too shall pass. And so, breathe upon her, dear God, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lay your healing hands upon her, that she believe, and she will be healed. Amen. The Spirit of truth leading into all truth. Give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to proclaim the word and works of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. Our recessional hymn, 564, 564.
Um, three, three, three. continue to keep our young sister in prayer. May God continue to revive her and believe that she is in a good space. She's in a very good space, so we are thankful that he has answered our prayer. So go in peace and serve the Lord. Lord bless you and a wonderful week, my friends. Thank you. <laughs>